Alright, so yeah, as Lulu was talking and as we were praying, was we know that our Father has many different aspects. And whether as a Father, as a Savior, as our healer, our deliverer. <clears throat> but one I know that um, I think we're going to hear a lot of tonight is one that I think that we struggle with in this nation is one of him as a king. Because when it comes to the king, that's when you deal with the parts that you're like, you know, this could get a little touchy, make me a little uneasy. Because wait a minute, he's sovereign, he makes decisions, he does things that um, maybe I don't understand. And so, but how important it is. I mean, even we know that Proverbs says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so when we begin to talk about God and His judgments and how He's holy, and, and um, but He's but the thing is that in that we can know that He's just and He's righteous, and whatever decision He does make and whatever judgment He may bring, it is the right judgment and the right decision, and it was totally fair. And we're going to see that tonight as well in the story of a guy whose name is Shimei. <laughs> We're not familiar with Shimei, but we'll get caught up with that. He is in <laughs> 2 Samuel, verse, or chapter 16. So again, we'll bring this up to, up to page on the story. Um, David has been king for some time now, and his, um, as we know, David made some big mistakes. had the affair with Bathsheba, killed her husband, and out of that there were some there were some serious consequences that came out of it. And so David, with his children, made some bad choices, and because of those bad choices, one of his children, Absalom, revolted against him. When he revolted against him, David would have now had to flee his kingdom. Rather than choosing to fight his son, and fight for the kingdom. He chooses to flee. So David, where we catch up here in, in chapter 16, David is now um, is fleeing Jerusalem. He's not bringing any type of resistance. He is literally entrusting his life into the hands of God because he knows that he's made some bad choices. and But he also knows that God is able to make things right. But he's not going to take it into his own hands. But along the way, David is leaving the city, and this guy named Shimei shows up. And Shimei is, man, he's a, he's a Jew. I mean, this guy comes from the tribe, I believe it says the tribe of Judah. And it, he is a man who, um, if you could say, he was very passionate about the Jews and about the kingdom of Israel. But he also had this hidden thing in his heart is that it, he, for whatever reason, was not happy with God's cho choice. Mm -hmm. He wanted it his way. He wanted it to be Saul's kingdom. He was, he was for Saul. And though, I'm sure, because we, we're again reading between the lines, but we can just imagine is that Shimei, he was, um, he was a good citizen. But yet, there was something lying deep in his heart. And isn't it interesting how time reveals the heart. <laughs> and so Shimei's heart is now being revealed. So we'll pick up at 16 verse 5. So as King David came to Bahiram, a man came out of the village cursing them. It was Shimei, son of Gerah, from the same clan as Saul's family. He threw stones at the king and the king's officers, and all the mighty warriors who surrounded him. Get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel, he shouted at David. The Lord is paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's claim. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Wow. wow. That's some... Um, some harsh, that's harsh. 
And to the king. Yeah. To the king. Again, it's Shimei's heart is being revealed here. But like uh, Olu was saying, <laughs> David's men step uh, in with their opinions here. <laughs> I love it. it was, yeah. Yeah, they, they throw their opinions out, but I love David's response. It's like, wow. So it says, why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? <laughs> I love David's man, though. Love it. <laughs> it's that whole boy on film. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, it's a dead dog. Dead dog. I love it. I love this man. <laughs> Abishai, son of Zariah, demanded, let me go over and cut off his head. <laughs> wow, kind of a James and John type thing, too, oh, yeah. you know? Let's call down thunder, Lord. Yeah. Let's call down lightning. We'll just get rid of him. <laughs> no, the king said. Who asked your opinion, you sons of Zariah? If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Wow. Wow. Now, we know the sons of Zariah, they, uh, they were... Yeah, they were mighty men, but they gave David a lot of headaches, um, gave him a lot of problems. So that's kind of hear David's tone in that too. He's, it's, uh, I think at one point he says, even they're too powerful for him, he'll leave God to judge the sons of Zariah. Hmm. And uh, so you can just see that David's, David's not listening to their counsel. He's listening and waiting on the Lord, even so much that he's committed himself and to God's hand. If, if God's going to have this man curse me, then so be it. So then, verse 11, Then David said to Abishai and to all his servants, My own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to do it. Wow. 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 Oh, wow. 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 And perhaps... The Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless him of these curses today. Mm -hmm. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shimei kept pace with them on a nearby hillside, cursing as he went, throwing stones at David, and tossing dust into the air. The king and all who were with him grew weary along the way, so they rested when they reached the Jordan River. There's three things about Shimei there in verse 13. Three things that I believe was shown to me for us to remember and to be reminded. The first was Shimei cursed. He cursed God's anointing. And how we, we, there's many examples in the Bible of how God feels about when we put our mouths on God's, His anointing. Even though even though David is being judged because of sin that he's done, and he's even saying that I'm wrong, David's even saying it, but yet still God holds them accountable for the words that they said against his anointing. More or less, he's saying, I interpret it as, this is my son, and this is between me and him. <laughs> who are you to, just like David said about the sons of Zariah, who are you? I don't care about your opinion. And God is like saying the same thing with David. Me and David are having some time right now. Hmm. And why are you putting your mouth on him? Wow. But yet Shimei is. And we know it's too easy. Especially in this nation where we have free speech. And oh, it's just where we should we have opinions and we're entitlement and everything else. And we so quickly, too often I think, are quick with our words. Hmm. And we're quick. We don't see it as, well I'm not cursing, I'm not cussing. But yet you're bringing death. If you're bringing death, if you're speaking wrongly about someone, you're cursing. Because we know that Proverbs says that the power of life and death is in your tongue. And God holds us. I mean, even Jesus says, by your words you'll be justified, by your words you'll be condemned. And it's very powerful. So the first thing is with the, with, the, uh, with the cursing. So the next thing is throwing stones. And I was like, oh man, throwing stones. I never threw stones at anybody. Oh, you haven't? You never throw stones at anybody? Sticks and stones may break my bones. <laughs> I throw stones at animals or snakes. Yep. Not to a human, not a human being. Yep. But in this, we know that stones, what is it? These, maybe these insults, these, again, words 
these things that that hurt people. And yet, yes, Shimei is doing it physically, but we know that spiritually, how we should be warned of that, and how we should be careful of that. We're not throwing stones. Just like they stone the adulterers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's a form of punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Also, stone uh, Stephen yeah. for even telling the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stone him. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Casting the stones. Casting stones. And then thirdly, my version says tossing dust into the air, but I like to put it as stirring things up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. kicking and stirring yeah. it up yeah. going down that path. I mean, just yeah. constantly. I can picture the mind. He was just throwing a fit. Yeah. Yeah. But Make still. A mess that, when there's no mess. Exactly. And how we, wow. as God's kids, God's people, because remember, Shimei is a children, a child of God, a child of Israel. His heart is revealing otherwise, but as far as his standing is a Jewish people, descendant of Abraham, is there, but yet his heart, which God is focused on, just like he said about David, he's a man after my heart. Shimei's heart is being revealed, and it's about, the last one was about stirring things up, and how easy it is for people, if they're not careful, they can stir things up. I know we've experienced it. I mean, yes, you can say we've experienced it in this group, but even individually, how people can just, whether they're, you call them troublemakers, whether they're gossips, whatever else, they can just stir things up, and it's wrong, and God is not pleased. So as we see, as um, these three things, I think we're going to see as we move along in the story of Shimei, of how God is going to handle this situation. So again, no, first time, this is the first time that Shimei has been shown mercy. King David shown mercy. Hmm. Let's go to now to 2 Samuel 19. We'll pick up at verse 15. So again, we fast forward a little bit. Absalom was defeated, um, and King David has been, is returning now to the kingdom of Israel. He's returning to reclaim his throne. And now the tide has shifted. Hmm. Praise God. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yes. And we're gonna exactly. But it's interesting what, how we see our friend Shimei. Mm -hmm. So the reading, picking up at verse 15. So the king started back to Jerusalem. And when he arrived at the Jordan River, the people of Judah came to Gilgal to meet him and escort him across the river. Shimei, son of Gerah, the man from Baharim and Benjamin, hurried across with the men of Judah to welcome King David. Oh, yeah, gosh. buddy. In, in, a, in a sense, Shimei is shrewd, man. He's, he knows. He's smart. He's smart. <laughs> yeah. He knows he better grovel or something. It's, a, it's bad stuff what he did. You know, Jesus says that the, the sons of this world are very shrewd. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, they're very shrewd. Yep. <laughs> and he tells us oh, to yeah. be shrewd. To be Why shrewd. is a serpent? Or as shrewd as a serpent? With gentle as a dove. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 17. A thousand other men from the tribe of Benjamin were with him, including Ziba, the chief servant of the house of Saul, and Ziba's 15 sons and twin servants. They rushed down to the Jordan to meet the king. They crossed the shallows of the Jordan to bring the king's household across the river, helping him in every way they could. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Things have turned. Wow. It's like Olu and I talk about sometimes, and I share with other people, and just one day, it's just one, one day, day, that's all it is. It's just life one day. changes totally. Yes. Yes. Just one day. Yeah. And that's the way it is. We see it again in David's life here. Hmm. But as the king was about to cross the river, Shimei fell down before him. My lord the king, please forgive me, he pleaded. Mm -hmm. Forget the terrible thing your servant did when you left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. I know how much I've sinned. That is why I've come here today, the very first person in all Israel, to greet my lord the king. Uh-oh, here's Abishai again. Yeah. <laughs> Then Abishai, son of Zariah, said, Shimei should die. <laughs> For he cursed the Lord's anointed king. <laughs> and I said, then, I'll all let him. <laughs> <laughs> so 
said, yeah. And again, David's response. Who asked your opinion, it sounds as right. It's like, it's like he said, you always open your mouth. You yeah. don't speak. Yeah. Would you just keep quiet? Why have you become my adversary today? This is not a day for execution, but for celebration. Today I am once again king of Israel. Then turning to Shimei, David vowed, your life will be spared. Hmm. Mercy number two. Mercy number two. I find it interesting, and I think we're going to see again as wow. we finish this story. Shimei knows he's shrewd. He knows the right. He knows the the right. Um, I don't know if the right words protocol, but he knows how to act. He knows the right things to do to give the people what they want. So it looks good. But yet, I firmly believe, and I think we'll all come to this conclusion, is David and God knew Shimei's heart was still not changed. It was still not loyal to King David. So we fast forward to 1 Kings. And we'll go in chapter 2. So now David is at the end of his kingdom, the end of his time. And his kingdom is coming to an end for himself. He's about to hand, he is handing the baton to Solomon. And it's so interesting is that as David is kind of breathing his last words, how he mentions three people on his like dying bed. And he mentions these three people. And one of them is our friend our topic of discussion, Shimei. But well, we'll go ahead and start at, at verse 1 of chapter 2, and we'll read through verse 11. As the time of King David's death approached, he gave this charge to his son Solomon. I'm going to where everyone on earth must someday go. Take courage and be a man. Observe the requirements of the Lord your God and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees, commands, regulations, and laws written in the law of Moses so that you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. If you do this, the Lord, then the Lord will keep the promise he made to me. He told me, if your descendants live as they should and follow me faithfully with all their heart and soul, one of them will always sit on the throne of Israel. And there is something else. You know what Joab, son of Zariah, did to me when he murdered my two army commanders? Again, Joab, one of the sons of Zariah, Abishai's brother. Oh, yeah. Abner, son of Ner, Masa, son of Jether. He pretended that it was an act of war, but it was done in the time of peace, staining his belt and sandals with innocent blood. Do with him what you think is best, but don't let him grow old and go to his grave in peace. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Wow. Be kind to the sons of Barzillai of Gilead. Make them permanent guests at your table, for they took care of me when I fled from your brother Absalom. Wow. So not all that. There's a blessing there, too. Oh, yes. And here he is. And remember Shimei, son of Gerah, the man from Bahurim and Benjamin. He cursed me with a terrible curse Whoa. as I was fleeing Mahanael. He came down to meet me at the Jordan River. I swore by the Lord that I would not kill him, but that oath does not make him innocent. You are a wise man, and you will know how to arrange a bloody death for him. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Then David died and was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. David reigned for Israel for 40 years, seven of them in Hebron, 33 in Jerusalem. Solomon became king and sat on the throne of David his father, and his son, or in his kingdom, was firmly established. So we fast forward, David, or Solomon is now established in his kingdom, and he's more or less following his dad's orders. And things begin to surface. Adonijah does his thing. He's taking, he has to take care of his own brother. He has to destroy his own brother because, again, he wouldn't listen. Joab also, he sided with Adonijah. 
So he's taken out. So you just see God's judgments. God's judgments are, are real. They're true. And then, again, he, he calls in our friend Shimeon. Picking up on verse 36 of chapter 2. Then the king sent for Shimei and told him, Build a house here in Jerusalem and live there. But don't step outside the city to go anywhere else. On the day you do, so much as cross the Kidron Valley, you will surely die, and your blood will be on your own head. <laughs> Shimei replied, Your sentence is fair. I will do whatever my lord the king commands. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem for a long time. We'll pause there. Again, third time. Third time of God's mercy. We see again, we're talking about God's judgment. But in His judgments, there will always, I, I firmly believe, that there will always be, whether we acknowledge them or not, but in the last day, in the day of the final judgment, you will have seen His mercies in His judgments. He is so merciful to Shimei here. And Shimei's heart is still we're going to find out Shimei's heart is still revealed. It's still refusing to change. Even though he said yes. So 39. But three years later, two of Shimei's slaves ran away to King Akish, son of Maka of Gath. Now pause again. It would be easy for us to say, or anyone with logic will be like, well, yeah, but it was three years. You know, and maybe he forgot. Maybe he you don't forget when the king has you move to a city, move to Jerusalem, and gives you a death threat if you step outside. I'm sorry, you don't just slip your mind. He knew exactly what he was about to do here. So he had the two slaves ran away. When Shimei learned where they were, he saddled his donkey and went with Gath to search for them. Why couldn't he have sent someone else? When he found them, he brought them back to Jerusalem. Solomon heard that Shimei had left Jerusalem and had gone to Gath and returned. Watching him. Exactly. So the king sent for Shimei and demanded, Didn't I make you swear by the Lord and warn you not to go anywhere else or you would surely die? And you replied, This sentence is fair. I would do as you say. Then why haven't you kept your oath to the Lord and obeyed my command? Excuse me. The king also said to Shimei, you certainly remember all the wicked things you did to my father David. May the Lord now bring that evil on your own head. Wow. See, it wasn't Solomon's fault. And it wasn't David's fault. This is Shimei's fault. This is, he has brought it on his own head. Yes, it is the Lord's judgment. But God says, we'll get to that here in a second. I'll finish this. But may I, King Solomon, receive the Lord's blessing. And may one of David's descendants always sit on his throne in the presence of the Lord. Then at the king's command, then I, the son of Joiada, took Shimei outside and killed him. So the kingdom was now firmly in Solomon's grip. Wow. So the, the verse that, we know this verse, but it really rang loud to me as I studied Shimei, is in Galatians chapter 5. When it comes to God's sovereignty, when it comes to Him being king and being holy and just. Matter of fact, if I could have Baluk, could you read starting at verse 7? Verse 7, okay. Let's... Chapter 5, verse 7. Galatians 5 7, right? Yep. Uh, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Galatians 6. Verse oh, seven. 6. My 6 is tucked down oh, in so my Bible. Yeah. No, I'm looking at 5. Okay. That's 6 verse six, 7. Verse seven. Okay. All right. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Do not be deceived. Mm. You will not mock God. And man, Shimei, he just he, How do we see that he mocked God? Yes, God's judgment came on Shimei's life, 
but he mocked him by he mocked his mercy. Time and time and time again. Three times we see recorded. And those weren't just three little times, if we could say in human sense. Those were three big times that he was shown great mercy. And yet his heart was hard. And judgment came. God is a God of justice. He is a God of judgment. Galatians 6, 7 says, don't, make, don't, be, don't be a fool. Don't, don't play with the things of God. Don't play, don't mess with his servants. Don't be, beware of your words. Beware because you will reap what you sow. And I know that's strong. I know it is. But it's, you know, it's that strong love. I give strong warnings to my children because I love them. And I know God's taught that to me. And I know that we need that. We need to know that that is his love. Because he wants to protect us. He wants to keep us. And he wants the best for us. But yet we also need to know, wait a minute, you just, you can't, you can't mistreat dad like that. You can't mistreat the king like that. You can't dishonor the king like that. There is a price to pay. And for Shimei, it was big. Didn't have to be. Man, even, even the very last one with Solomon was, he was in the, the holy city. The city of all cities. The city that even to this day the world fights over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's that important to this world. And he was there, and he had a good life, even had servants. Mm -hmm. Well, they ran away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, why they ran away? Yeah. Good point. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. But yet he still, he blew off God's mercy. Mm -hmm. And judgment came. Mm -hmm. Wow. So with that, we close. And we thank God for his mercies, but we also thank him that he's just. He's just and he's righteous. Wow. 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 Praise God. Praise God.